The Department of Meteorology and Atmospheric Science at Penn State also houses the Pennsylvania State Climate Office. And every now and then, we like to check in with the Pennsylvania State climatologist himself, Kyle Imhoff, who joins us on today's show for some climate connections. Kyle, welcome back to Weather World. It's good to be back. Now that the spring semester is over, Kyle, give us an update on some of the projects that you worked on in the climate office with some of the students. Yeah, so we actually had uh, this spring semester, we were working on a new feature that I hope for the website that will be historical weather summaries. So high impact weather events, um, things that probably users or, or viewers of the show will know, uh, high impact weather events like the blizzard of 93, the tornado outbreak of 1985, those major weather events. Um, so we're gonna be doing some nice reports, weather summaries that the students have worked really hard on. So we'll be publishing those on our website very soon. I also have a student intern this summer that will be working on quality control of our mesonet data. So making sure that there's no major data outages, all the sensors are reporting what they should be reporting. Um, so they'll be working on that over the summer months and hopefully into the fall as well. We often talk with you about the Keystone Mesonet, mm -hmm. and I understand some new sites are about to come online. Pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, yes, yeah. so we have a, we'll actually have about a half dozen new sites for our PMN network that will also be a part of the iFlows 2.0 revamp that Pima is funding. Um, so we'll have seven new sites that have concrete uh, already. The concrete bases are installed, and then we'll be out doing those those uh, installations very soon. And hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have as many as 12 to 15 new new site installations. And real quick, Kyle, for those who don't know, what mm -hmm. is PEMN yeah. and iFlows? Yeah, so our PEMN network is the Pennsylvania Environmental Monitoring Network. Um, that was funded through Penn State. And then iFlows was an antiquated system now that was uh, built 20 or 30 years ago to mainly focus on flood impacts. And so that was, it was heavy rain monitoring, stream, stream gauges were installed for that network initially, but now we're revamping that using our PMN sites as a prototype for that network as well. Very interesting. And you've yeah. actually had um, one of our own, Carl Schneider, now works with you in the climate office as well. And he's been doing some revamping of the website that you mentioned and some new products. Yeah, so our, our website's really going through a lot of um, a lot of new tools and new features that we're going to be building, um, and I think we made a lot of really good improvements. So one of the things we've we've done right off the bat was change the look of the homepage just slightly. Um, so we're now featuring some of our new products and what we know are really popular pages that people like to visit. Um, so that'll be scrolling through the homepage when you go there. We also have a lot of new data visualizations and maps that we're creating. So our PMN data, we actually have a new visualization tool that has all sorts of charts and graphs that you can look at the past several days worth of data. Our camera images are now on that visualization tool as well. We have time-lapse capabilities. You can look back through the past 24 hours or so of camera images and you can loop through those to see what the, the weather was like over the past uh, day or so. Um, so there's a lot of great new tools, current condition maps, daily weather maps um, that are there as well. So our maps tools are, are changing as well. So Carl's been working really hard on, on updating a lot of those things and I'm really proud of what we've developed so far. Yeah, great new products. And yeah. you know, one of the big things with, when you're talking about the PEMN sites or the iFlow sites, um, it's all about partnerships. And you really manage a lot of those partnerships with the Climate Office. Talk a little bit about some of those uh, other projects with partners that you're working on this year. Yeah, so we have uh, some really great partners. So one of the ones I'm really excited about is the Education Connection. So we're partnering with Greencastle Antrim School District for K through 12 curriculum development that revolves around our Mesonet data. So we're gonna be developing lesson plans that any teacher can use across the state of Pennsylvania that will be looking at the, the, the site data and it could be a site that's installed at school districts. So some of the, the sites that we will be installing, some of these new stations will be at school districts. So students can go out, take a look at the sensors, go out to the tower, do a little field trip outside to take a look at those things and then make the connections to the data that they see when they're looking on their screen, downloading a spreadsheet, uh, whatever it may be. So it's all about getting that interaction with the students of the sensors themselves, the instrumentation, and then what they see when they're downloading data and looking at the data in, in finer detail. So those those connections are going to be really exciting to see and getting feedback from, from teachers and students to see what that's, what that's going to look like is yeah, exciting. Yeah, absolutely. How soon do you think some of those um, uh, interesting things will come online for students and educators. Right, so we're finishing that up right now. So I'm, I'm hoping that the lesson plans will be developed and finished up by the next uh, six months or so, maybe even by fall uh, for the next academic year, we'll have those lesson plans out to teachers. They can start to look at it, we'll get feedback um, and, and we'll just continue to tailor these things and tweak these things for, for students and make sure that it's a useful tool for, for teachers. So 
I understand that you've got some interesting climate office related travel coming up here. What's going on? Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually going to Col Colorado, Fort Collins. Um, is the site of our annual American Association of State Climatologists conference. So every year we get together and talk about uh, what it's like to be a state climatologist and, and some of the different tools and features that other offices are developing, um, different ideas for ways that we can collaborate together. Uh, actually, right now I'm, I'm on a committee with that organization to come up with a recognition criteria or a certification program for mesonets across the country. So, um, so there's a lot of great work that we do. So uh, I'm excited to get out to Colorado and also visit a couple of the national parks out there as well and get some hiking in. So, yeah. so it's going to be exciting. It's great to have Pennsylvania and our department represented at that yes. conference. And you've been going for the last several years, right? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. About a decade now. So one real quick, one of the most popular things that we like to, to mention, mm -hmm. of course, um, when we chat with you on the show is um, the newsletter that mm -hmm. is actually put out by the Climate Office. Talk about how um, you work with students on producing that newsletter and what kind of content is inside. Yeah, the newsletter is, is one of the best ways to get students to highlight their work. So we, we look at the past months of, of weather events across the state, um, and then we also try to make some applied climate articles that, that center around the weather in Pennsylvania and what's happening in the current season. So we work with students every single semester to get them um, some experience with just writing, with looking at data sets and, and publishing that work. And, and we have hundreds of, of uh, readers of that newsletter, so it gives students exposure and, and, and gives them some ideas for how they can use that data moving down the road. And if folks want to subscribe? You can go to our website. Um, there's a subscription button right on the homepage. Great. Well, Kyle Imhoff, Pennsylvania State Climatologist, always good to have you on Weather World to chat with us. And we'll be right back with more.